Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank you for attending today's lecture. Today's lecture is Ashley James. Ashley James has over 15 years of professional and volunteer experience serving charitable and educational institutions of all sizes and scopes. Her lifetime career achievements include over $27 million funded in written and co-written government foundation and corporate grant proposals. She currently serves as the executive director at Atlanta Glow, a nonprofit that provides mentoring, leadership development, and life skills training to underserved women and girls. She is also the principal consultant at Thrive Mission Company, a consultant agency providing mission-driven consulting and grant writing proposals to grassroots nonprofits. Today's topic will be the mentoring effect, promoting sustainable career outcomes through professional mentoring relationships. With that, I would like to hand it over to Ashley. Thank you. Hey, Lisa, thank you so much uh, for that great introduction. Uh, as you uh, just piggybacking off of what you said, just really excited to be here and to uh, contribute to ESW Talks speaker series. Um, I, as as uh, Lisa mentioned, I'm Ashley James, and I will go ahead and share my screen so that we can start today's discussion around mentoring. All right, so today's discussion is around mentoring. It's titled The Mentoring Effect, Promoting Sustainable Career Outcomes Through Professional Mentoring Relationships. Feel free to use the chat feature um, throughout the presentation. Um, if you have questions related to something that we're talking about uh, uh, on each slide, uh, if I'm not able to address it um, on the slide, then I'll also kind of ask for questions at the end. So um, as Elisa shared, um, I have a bachelor's and master's degree, uh, one in biblical studies from Luther Rice Seminary University and another in nonprofit management and leadership from Liberty University. In terms of uh, where I serve um, from day to day, I am president and principal consultant at Thrive Mission Company, um, which she shared is a nonprofit consultant agency that specializes in grant writing and communication and development services for grassroots organizations. And then I also serve as founder and executive director of Atlanta Glow, which is, a, is an acronym for Atlanta Growing Leadership of Women. And we are a um, mentoring and life skills and leadership development nonprofit for underserved young women and girls in the Atlanta area who are between the ages of 14 and 25. And so um, working it with a mentoring organization, I'm often asked about um, the concept of mentoring itself. And um, I'm often asked to share about best practices and where to find a mentor. And so i um, happy to share with the ESW network in terms of uh, the benefits of mentoring, how to find a mentor, how to make the best of it, and how to really make it work for you. So let's get started. Uh, more and more professionals are actively pursuing mentoring relationships to advance their careers. But not only does mentoring offer the opportunity to develop knowledge and get value, valuable advice, but it offers the chance to learn new perspectives, gain leadership skills, expand networks, and bridge the gap between theory and practice. Today's session will explore the various benefits of mentoring and the types of relationships that exist, how to find a professional mentor, what to look for, and the keys to maintaining and sustaining a strong mentorship so that it produces favorable career outcomes. In defining a mentor, a mentor is an experienced individual who shares their knowledge, experience, and advice with a less experienced person or mentee. Mentors themselves are trusted advisors who support and encourage their mentees by offering suggestions and feedback, both general and specific. A mentoring relationship may be established between two or more people within a shared company, industry, or a network. And then a strong mentoring relationship is built on mutual trust, respect, and collaboration and offers many personal and professional advantages for both parties. It also requires a strong commitment of time and effort from both. In terms of the benefits of mentoring, a professional mentor can help you gain valuable advice for example, they can offer valuable insight into what it takes to get ahead, 
They can be your guide and all, also a sounding board for ideas to help you decide on, a, on the best course of action in difficult situations. You may learn shortcuts that help you work more effectively and also avoid reinventing the wheel. Mentoring can also help you develop knowledge and skills. A mentor can help you identify and acquire specified skills and expertise that you might need to succeed. They can teach you what you need to know or even advise you on where to go for the information. Mentor can also help you improve your communication skills. Just like your mentor, you may also learn to communicate more effectively, which may help further you at work. Mentoring can help you learn new perspectives, including new ways of thinking. And, um, and, and likewise, your, your mentor can learn from you in, in this respect. You can build your professional network. Your mentor can offer opportunities to expand your network of personal and per professional contacts. You can access your mentor's personal network to give you a chance to meet important people at, at a crucial time in your career. And this can also help broaden your range of possible professional opportunities. That goes on even further into advancing your career. A mentor can help you stay focused and on track in your career by providing advice, skills development, networking, and so on. They can help you build your resume, guide you on a project, and help you identify resources. If you're looking to build your leadership potential, mentoring can also encourage the development of your leadership competencies. These competencies are often more easily gained through example, guided practice, or experience than by education and training. Mentoring may also supplement any formal learning by helping bridge the gap between theory and practice. Formal education and training is complemented by the knowledge and hands-on experience of a competent practitioner, such as your mentor. In terms of programs, there are a variety of different mentoring programs that exist. More and more organizations are creating formal mentoring programs for various reasons from increased morale to increased organizational productivity and career development, the benefits of, of an organization that actively supports mentoring are numerous. Formal mentoring programs are structured, have oversight, and have clear and specific organizational goals. Corporate mentoring programs have long been recognized as an essential strategy for attracting, developing, and retaining top employees. For example, some agencies as a part of their formal onboarding process assigns mentors or peer buddies to new hires as an information source, allowing new employees the opportunity to better navigate a new work environment. Then there's informal mentoring. Unlike formal mentoring, informal mentoring has minimal to no structure and oversight and may or may not have a clear and specific goal. Informal mentoring is normally for interpersonal enhancement, but can also provide and promote career development. Nevertheless, the success of either type of mentoring, whether formal or informal, is greatly dependent upon clearly defined roles and expe expectations, in addition to the participants' awareness of the benefits of participating in the program itself. So let's break down the different, uh, the different formats of these programs. Mentoring can occur in a group format. And this is when one mentor is teamed with several prodigies who meet at the same time. As a mentor poses questions to the groups, uh, listens, and, listens and reflects, he or she engages all members of the group into the conversation. Each one has their own experience and insights to share and can draw their own learning from this group discussion. Then there's peer mentoring. This is usually a relationship with an individual within the same grade, organization and or job series. The purpose of peer mentoring is to support colleagues in their professional development and growth, to facilitate mutual learning and to build a sense of community. Peer mentoring is not hierarchical, prescriptive, judgmental or evaluative. Then there's reverse mentoring. It's, this is a, a style of mentoring where a senior person in terms of age, experience, or position is mentored by a junior individual. And again, in terms of age, experience, or position. Reverse mentoring aims to help the older, more senior person learn from the knowledge of a younger person. 
The key to success in reverse mentoring is the ability to create and maintain an attitude of open, openness to the experience and dissolve the barriers of status, power, and position. And last but not least, there's virtual mentoring, which utilizes virtual video conferences, such as this platform, the internet, and email to mentor individuals. This is beneficial for those who are unable to leave their workspace and for those who live in a rural or remote community or a pandemic community. <laughs> virtual mentoring is usually less expensive compared to face-to-face -face, uh, mentoring and provides an individual with more choices for mentors. So let's talk about where to find a mentor. Again, a mentor is specifically someone whose knowledge and experience the mentee respects and whose wisdom and know-how can support the professional growth and development of the mentee. Often this can be a boss, a professor, or another leader who the mentee has already met, but sometimes a mentor can be someone who is unknown to the mentee. Mentors don't necessarily need to be the most senior person at an organization or within the field, but the right mentor depends on what knowledge the mentee hopes to gain. Mentors aren't going to go out of their way to drag someone along if they don't show initiative. So here are a few places and a couple tips to start looking for a, for a mentor and ideas on how to approach him or her. You can look for mentors within local organizations. If you don't have an idea about who to ask to be your mentor, these local organizations uh, that, that might be in your area um, or even subject area, start there. Again, subject areas that you might be interested in, careers that you might be interested in, and look into their leaders. Ask to do something as simple as getting coffee together. This can be uh, a successful tactic. But another way is to, to, engage the, to engage the mentors to collaborate on a project that is of interest to both parties. So choose something that support your, supports your potential mentor, mentor's work and ask for some help putting it together. This way you're both invested in completing a goal together that can lead to a deeper relationship during the process. You can also look for mentors at school or work. Before you leave college or a job, establish a, net, a connection with an industry professional. During your job search, contact them for advice or suggestions, and they, they might just be able to connect you to a position you never thought was possible. Maybe they keep in touch with a past colleague who runs a top PR firm or a friend who recruits for a top tech company. You can also find mentors at events and conferences. If someone you admire is scheduled to speak at an event or a conference near you, you are just in luck. But before you attend, do your research. Find out as much as you can about that talk's focus and take steps to learn more about the topic so that you're feeling fully prepared to ask an intelligent question during the Q&A portion of the event. If it feels natural, consider lingering after for a post-presentation chat. You can also find mentors in networking groups. Joining a networking group can be painful if nobody in the group is in a line of work remotely similar to your own, or as is often the case, most of the attendees are as green as you are. That's why you need to try out a bunch of different groups before you settle on one or two. Websites like meetup.com and eventbrite.com are great places to start. When you find yourself surrounded by people who are smarter than you or who are at least more experienced, then you know you're in the right place. Once you've done that, make it your mission to talk to the one or two most interesting people in the room and be sure to exchange cards with them. You can also find mentors online. Seek out business professionals who make good use of their blog, Facebook page, or Twitter account. If your mentor-to-be shows lots of activity online, that's a good chance that they'd be open to interacting with you, at least virtually. Try to find two to three voices in your industry of choice who, tr who truly inspire you. Then it's simple, subscribe to their feeds and read what they like, what they write. And once you know more about them, get ready to engage. And last but not least, you can find mentors through friends and family. When looking for an advisor, don't forget to keep tabs on what's happening in your immediate circle. Sometimes family and friends can offer sound professional advice too. Even if they aren't able to help you themselves, they may know someone who can. 
So don't be afraid to let those close to you know that you are on the hunt for someone who can guide you in your career. So who's in your network? Thinking about your sphere of influence, where would you look first for a mentor? Consider the following. What formal mentoring programs exist within your, your community, within your industry? Uh, what local organizations or companies might your mentor be involved with? So think about that. Uh, think about what in individuals seem vested or expressed interested in your success. That might be a great opportunity there. Uh, what groups exist that promote relationship building or resource sharing? And what types of events might your prospective mentor be attending? So these are all great questions to start and stop to ask yourself uh, as you are um, mapping out potential mentors and where they might be located. Once you have poten potential people in mind, these are a few things to look for in that mentor. Look for a willingness to share skills, knowledge, and expertise. A good mentor is, is going to be willing to teach you what he or she knows and accept the mentee where they currently are in their professional development. Good mentors can remember what it was like just starting out in the field. The mentor doesn't take the mentoring relationship lightly and they'll understand that good mentoring requires time and commitment and they'll be willing to continually share information and their ongoing support. Good mentors also demonstrate a positive attitude and act as a positive role model. They're going to exhibit the personal attributes that it takes to be successful in, in your field, or in a field rather. By showing the mentee what it takes to be productive and successful, they are demonstrating the specific behaviors and actions required to succeed. Also, when a mentor has a positive outlook on life, they are able to help you through tough times and show you how to find the opportunity in any difficulties that you may be facing. They will never give up on you or let, or let you give up on yourself. Most often, they will help you set goals and invest in your success just as much as you do. While a mentor can navigate a prodigy in the right direction to reach their potential, prodigies must still rely upon themselves to succeed. To achieve this, develop an action plan to achieve any agreed upon goals and communicate on a regular basis. A great mentor can help open the right doors. They'll introduce you to the right people. Look for someone who is well respected by their colleagues and coworkers and whose contribution in the field is appreciated willing, and that they are willing to be themselves, are business savvy, people smart, and have a great reputation. They'll also exhibit enthusiasm in the field. A mentor who does not exhibit enthusiasm about his or her job will ultimately not make a good mentor. Enthusiasm is catching and new employees want to feel as if their job has meaning and the potential to create a good life. A great mentor is also going to value ongoing learning and growth in the field. Mentors are in a position to illustrate how the field is growing and changing and that even after many years, there are still new things to learn. Anyone that feels stagnant in their current position will not make a good mentor. So good men mentors are those who are committed and are open to experimenting and learning practices that are new and novel to the field. They continually read professional journals and may even write articles on, this, on subjects where they have developed some expertise. They are excited to share their knowledge with new people entering the field and may choose to teach or attend classes to further develop their knowledge and skills. They enjoy taking workshops and also attending professional conferences provided through their membership and professional associations. A good mentor is also going to provide guidance and constructive feedback. A mentor is responsible for, responsible for being honest and telling you like it is. They put things in perspective and let you know if you have areas in need of improvement. Your mentor's job isn't to tear your confidence down but they should help you learn appropriate business behavior by giving you an opportunity for self-examination and growth. Let's talk about some of the reasons mentoring relationships fail. While mentor relationships can produce positive developmental and organizational outcomes, both mentoring programs and relationships sometimes fail due to a variety of causes and problems. For example, 
lack of participation, no leadership involvement, poor planning, unrealistic expectations, and fuzzy goals. The top mentee elements which play a role in mentoring failure are not being open to feedback, not sharing sufficient information, unwillingness to reach out, unrealistic needs, uh, unrealistic needs, being unmotivated, and lack of follow-up. The top mentor elements which play a role in mentoring failure are lack of mentoring skills themselves, lack of knowledge, lack of experience, lack of empathy, not realizing the seriousness of mentees issues, and constantly giving negative feedback. So, so failures can occur on both parts. How do you determine a mentoring failure? This is usually done by the experience of a mentor. However, other ways, there are other ways to determine, um, other ways to determine this is also when the mentee says he or she is not progressing. The mentee's team or boss may feel like they are not making progress or from non-productive sessions experienced by both parts. This might show when mentees or mentors start to min miss sessions without any reason or when mentees fail to apply any mentoring advice to their work. Mentoring is a very progressive field, which is growing, and it's important to continuously improve mentoring. Mentoring has the risk of poor outcomes, and as such, um, all involved must be prepared to accept this unfavorable situation as a possibility. So it's always a possibility that it might fail. Um, Therefore, we need to take great care in the structure, methods, receiving, and delivering mentoring. And in, in doing, we have to take care in the structure of our programs, the methods that we evolve, as well as receiving and delivering mentoring itself to mitigate any potential poor outcomes um, and increase your chances of success. So to sustain your mentoring relationships and make sure that they're healthy and thriving, let's talk about that. To make the most of a mentoring relationship, start with a formal agreement that outlines the roles and expectations of both participants. Include details such as when you will meet, how frequently, and for how long, and what the goals of a re relationship are to help build a strong foundation for the relationship. While the duration and frequency of mentoring varies, most mentoring partners meet or talk at least once a week for about an hour. The format and content of these conversations may vary, but again, typically consists of brainstorming sessions to solve problems, updates, and follow-ups on current projects, or more focused discussion of professional development topics. A mentoring relationship should not be considered an inside track to the top or an opportunity to complain. It is a respectful and professional relationship in which both parties can learn from the experience and from each other. As the relationship develops, mentees should remember to share their successes with their mentors and make sure the mentor knows how valuable their time and insight are. So getting started, let's say you find your mentor. A couple things that you want to prepare and um, start working on before you meet with your mentor are, ask yourself, what are your goals? How can a mentor assist you in meeting these goals? And what's the best way to communicate these with your mentor? Also take the initiative, introduce yourself by phone, brief letter or email, and invite your mentor to meet. Suggest potential topics and agree on confidential, confidentiality within the relationship. Ask your mentor for his or her resume or CV. Identify key steps in your career path that seem valuable to your career exploration and update your own resume, CV, or bio. Next, know your schedule so you can schedule future times to meet with your mentor. And consider the skill sets that require additional mentoring. For example, what skills do you need to learn or improve on as a part of your career path? What do you want to change about your work style? What experiences do you want or need to obtain? And what professional networks are important to your success? As you meet with your mentor, be sure to discuss short and long-term professional goals and work together to develop st steps to reach each of these goals and set a timeline. Also determine the frequency of your meetings. Your interactions can range from brief email or phone check-ins to lengthy follow-up meetings. 
and also suggest potential topics for future, future meetings. For example, setting and achieving goals, managing time effectively, balancing personal and professional life, identifying possible presentations to attend and present it, and identifying strategies for professional growth. Once you meet with your mentor, after the meeting and throughout your mentoring relationship, be sure to establish a checklist for follow-up and keep an ongoing portfolio of activities and works in progress. Check your timeline on these items frequently. Also be sure to reevaluate the mentoring relationship regularly to ensure that it is on track for success. A few uh, best practices to promote a thriving mentoring relationship are being respectful of your mentor's time, remembering your mentor is a busy professional with many responsibilities and demands on their time. You can also help build a successful relationship by identifying, pl planning, and preparing issues for every meeting and discussing it with your mentor. Always be on time and respond promptly to phone calls or emails. Recognize generational differences and discuss them with your mentor. Try not to overstep boundaries. Make things happen and initiate activities. And set up times to meet with your mentor by taking the initiative to, to set a call or email first. Ask your mentor to work on a special project or presentation. Ask for advice and welcome feedback. You will also get much more from a relationship if you clearly and consistently ask your mentor for advice. A good mentor will provide you with the advice, guidance, and opportunities for improvement. Remember that all information gathered and discussed with your mentor should be kept confidential unless agreed upon that it's okay to share. When making comments about your mentor to others, be sure to keep them positive or neutral. Concerns about your mentor should only be shared either directly with your mentor or with a mentoring program manager. Let's stop here and see what questions you may have about mentoring. Feel free to drop those in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and share them virtually. And I'll go ahead and stop sharing so that we can have that discussion. Well, it sounds like that was pretty straightforward for everyone. <laughs> and that's always great too. All right. Well, I am going to hand it back over to Elisa so that she can drop, uh, she can close us out. But I also want to, uh, before we do that, invite you all to connect with me either on LinkedIn or feel free to uh, drop a message in our um, contact box on my website um, for my nonprofit or for consulting if either is of interest to you, if that's a career field that you're interested in, whether it's nonprofit or um, mentoring itself, feel free to drop me um, a message. Well, it looks like we do have uh, some question, one question here from Shelly. What are some good ways to show initiative when asking someone to be your mentor? For example, would you like to be my mentor or somewhat, somewhat, somehow have more rapport, rapport before that question? That's a really good question. And I would say that that really depends on the person and your confidence, you know, and, you know, we have some, some individuals might feel more confident coming straight out with that question. And that's, that's certainly uh, welcome. Or uh, for others, it might just uh, take um, a little bit more relationship building before making that happen. Um, I would say in my personal experience, my personal preference, um, especially as someone who mentors individuals often, um, is if, if it's informal mentoring, like we aren't in any type of formal program, um, it's maybe just someone who comes up to me um, at a conference or an event, um, I'm okay, like if they ask for a coffee or, you know, want to have coffee, of course, in a non-pandemic, um, you know, time frame, uh, but maybe a Zoom meeting or phone call. Um, I'm, I'm always open to having those types of uh, conversations and sharing that type of um, input for one-offs. But I would say for someone who wants to um, 
have more of an ongoing mentoring relationship, um, then that initiative is going to be really important for me. So um, I would recommend someone who would be looking in that, that sort of mentorship to uh, show initiative by asking um, if they can maybe attend meetings with me or they can, if they can learn from me or if, um, they can help me with a project or help me as a volunteer with, with my nonprofit organization. Um, showing um, that, that sort of interest in the work that I do and the networks that I contribute to um, I would say that, that that would be probably my, my top suggestion for me, as well as for other professionals, um, that, uh, colleagues and things like that. That's typically what I see that their preferences as well as, is, is having individuals who can, um, show an investment or willingness to learn through, through their engagement, not necessarily just wanting to take, but rather wanting to learn, but also give back. Um, so yes, I would say either way, Shelly, if you wanted to just come out right out, right off the bat and say, Hey, I'm looking for a mentor and I'm interested, um, wanting to know if that's something you'd be interested in exploring. If you have the time, um, to maybe pour or, or share information, um, or be just taking a few extra steps and just developing that relationship a little bit further before going there, um, is a great strategy as well. So Yes, that's the answer. <laughs> Good. Um, any other questions? Thanks, Carly, for your comment. I'm glad you found it informational. Hi, Ashley. Um, this Hi, is Sarah. very helpful. Um, and I think something to think about just because I know from my own perspective and starting a career, um, there's not always an obvious way to, you know, find a mentor or you know, to have, especially starting remotely right now, um, to have those conversations. But I was wondering if you could also talk a little bit about, you know, if you were hoping to have a mentor, you know, in kind of like a dream role kind of career thing, or if you see, hear about work that's being done that you find inspirational, but that's outside of your workplace, like how you reach out to those people, which is a little bit more of like a cold reach out. Mm-hmm. Um, for, for those types of scenarios where, um, the person may not be right there in the office with you, or maybe they are, they're cross country or something like that, um, showing an, uh, an interest in the work that they do. So if they are maybe presenting at a conference or presenting, maybe they wrote an article online, um, reading that, maybe sending an, uh, an email or a comment, um, saying, you know, I've read your article. I thought this was really great. I was wondering if I might, you know, take, you know, if I, if I might have, you know, maybe 30 minutes of your time, if you might share some advice with me. Um, it is sort of a cold call, but, um, I, I'm, I'm always one for flattery. <laughs> and again, this is yeah. kind of where personality comes into play and, you know, everyone is, is different. Um, but I, I, I've always like, it's always worked for me to kind of maybe flatter someone and, and show an interest um, in, in the work that they do um, and an appreciation for it. Um, that kind of opens them up. It lets their guard down um, and, and, and kind of just, again, just opens them up. Um, and at the very yes. least, they might be willing to provide, you know, may, maybe a 30, 30 minute to an hour phone call and um, you can peek, peek their brain that way. Um, I just got someone who, you know, someone for, as an example, um, they live like in the Caribbean. Um, it was a young lady. She, she lives in somewhere in the Caribbean and she reached out um, through the contact form on my website and she was interested in getting involved in my program, um, which mm -hmm. is Atlanta based. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, it's hard to, to have someone as a volunteer or as a, even as a, um, a program participant who's not in the United States. Um, and so I, you know, I share with her, you know, while, um, mm -hmm. you know, it would be great to have you involved, our eligibility criteria is that you have to be local to Atlanta. Um, I said, um, but I'm happy, like, if you have a few questions or anything like that, or, you know, I'm happy to share, um, you know, a little bit about the program with you, like some of the content and 
some of the handouts and things like that, if she felt like that would at least, you know, she could walk away with something because I didn't want her to go empty handed. Um, and so, you know, she thanked me for my time. And then she, uh, you know, that was that email. And then maybe a week later, I got an email from her saying, hey, it's, you know, it's me again. Um, you know, um, I really appreciate you taking the time to reply to, um, to my, in my inquiry and um, my uh, opportunity to become involved with your organization. Um, but let me, you know, she's like, let me share a little bit more about, about myself. She said that she's a grad student and she um, is, is uh, studying um, like youth development and, um, and, you know, program management. That's kind of the career field she's sort of trying to get into. And she mm -hmm. said, I'm, I know that I'm going to be applying for my dissertation. Like I'm going to go, I'm going to go get my doctorate. And I know that I'll have a dissertation. Uh, would you be willing to be a resource for me? Um, I know that um, it's probably still a few months off before that happens, but I'm, I'm, um, I see you as, you know, an influencer in the nonprofit, um, you know, industry. And I'm wondering if you'd be open to um, quite me peeking your brain, that sort of thing. And so um, I was very like, I was like, yes, you know, yeah, let's set up Zoom, you know, as often as you need me, let's make it happen. And so that's just kind of an example of, of, of how she came about it. Like she got a, a, a kind of a, a no at the beginning, but she kind of, you know, she, ste she stepped back and she thought about, okay, what would be maybe uh, an invest, a good investment of both of our time? Um, something that she can help me with, but also might be enjoyable for her to talk about. Um, <laughs> and you know, I can talk all things nonprofits and program management and youth development and youth leadership. And I can talk about that all day. And so um, she, she reeled me in with that. And so that would, that would, you know, just kind of an example of how a way that I would do it is just show an investment or an interest in, in something they're doing or something they're interested about. Just kind of find out like what, you yeah, know, what cape they're wearing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's really helpful to hear. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? All right. Well, this has been great. Um, I will drop my email address in the chat if anyone cares to connect at any point and um i'm not sure if you all are sharing the presentation but i'd be happy to email it if, if um, anyone wants a copy of it i'd be happy to share that as well it has my contact information in there too okay yeah um yeah, actually, we, we do have everything is being recorded, so it will be posted on our YouTube channel. And um, on behalf of ESW and EarthHacks, we would like to thank you, Ashley, for sharing your insights and mentorship. Uh, we greatly appreciate your time, and thank you to everyone who attended today's presentation. And if by chance you didn't miss it again, it is on our YouTube channel. Um, so that would conclude today's presentation. Thank you, everyone, and have a great evening. Thank you all. Have a blessed thanks, week. Thanks, Lisa. And thanks, Ashley. Thank you.